Hi, I'm Jim and welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about knives. Now I know I've been talking a lot about knives, but that's what happens during COVID-19 when all your favorite knife companies decide to uh, drop all their knives at the same time. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the Phobos Tier 1. Um, regular viewers of the channel may recall that about two years ago I recorded a video on my Phobos MKV-7. And in that video, I said that the tier ones were very similar and they were going to launch um, sometime that year. Well, that never happened due to manufacturing problems. And now this year, COVID, uh, the knives have finally dropped. There was a pre-sale drop on the Phobos website about two weeks ago. And these should be hitting the, uh, the dealer websites, I would guess the first week in February, somewhere around there. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll talk about we'll talk about this knife. Uh, we'll talk about how it compares to the MKB7, and we'll talk about how it compares to the Phobos Legion as well. Um, if that interests you, stick around. So full disclosure, I am an admin on the Phobos Knives Facebook page. I'm not a shill by any by any stretch of the imagination. I purchased this extra knife because I believe in the knives and um, I like them so much. Um, this knife is going to a friend of mine and this one I am keeping for myself. So there are three different finishes this knife is available in. There's the, the acid etch, there's the stone wash, and then there's a satin finish. And I don't, I don't have the satin finish. The MKB7 is 12 inches long with a six and a half inch blade. The cutting edge is just over five and a half inches. The handle length is about five and a half inches, and it is 0 0.250 on the spine. Um, this particular knife is uh, CPM 3V, and it weighs 15 and a quarter ounces. Now, some of the unique features about the Tier 1 and many Phobos knives is the Persian swedge. So this has sort of a Persian drop point here, and as you can see, this makes the, the tip strong and, and flexible. Uh, it also has a fire steel notch at the top. Uh, it has a choil. Now the tier one comes in two versions. This is the tier one C, which means it comes with a choil. There is another version that comes with the wire splitter and I'll, I'll flash that on the screen. Uh, as you can see, this knife has a lot of jimping. Um, there's jimping on the top in front. There's jimping back here at the palm and then there's jump jimping in the finger well. Um, this jimping is not by any means uncomfortable. I know a lot of people dislike jimping. Uh, these knives were made by Eric Hansen, whose background is Special Forces, so he makes these knives with, uh, with that in mind. These are designed to be used in, in tough environments, in tough conditions. So, you know, there's jimping there so that you don't, you know, you don't lose your knife. Um, it's good for indexing. The way that it's been developed, you can see here that it's the, the jimping is somewhat chamfered. So there's no sharp ed edges here at all. It is, you know, it is quite comfortable. These particular scales are the uh, canvas micarta uh, with G10 red liners. And the one that I kept for myself is OD green micarta and also red G10 liners. These knives retail for $329.95. That's the base price. If you get carbon fiber scales, um, that's going to raise the price. If you get acid etch, and I don't believe there are any acid etch left. I think they were all sold in the pre-sale. But if you've managed to find an acid etch, the acid etch are going to start at $349.95. The knife comes with a great leather sheath. It is the same sheath that I have on my Legion. It is the same sheath that I have on my MKB7 with uh, perhaps a few modifications. Eric's been modifying the sheath um, over time. I think this is the, the, the Gen 2 sheath. As you can see, it's an ambidextrous leather sheath. It's got snaps on the back, so you can snap it around belts or, uh, or packs. It has these molly straps so that you can, again, strap it to your pack. Um, you, can, you can set these up this way so that you can you can do scout carry it also comes with a small leather loop for a ferro rod and you can see this is my mkb7 setup um, i've gone ahead and i've i've treated this uh, with a with a protectorant 
and um, you know, I carry my ferro rod. I also carry some survivor cord on it. So let's do a comparison between the MKB7 and the Tier 1. Uh, the MKB7 I've had for a while. As you can see, it's had some use to it. I've oiled it up a little bit so it doesn't look so bad on camera. Um, this knife is probably the best fire starting knife that I have. It sparks a ferro rod like nobody's business. If you haven't seen my uh, uh, my ferro rod comparison video, you know, go ahead and check it out. I'll put it up here somewhere. Um, that said, this is a custom MKB7, whereas this is a production Tier 1 um, C. How are they different? Well, the MKB7 is 12 and a half inches long, so it's a half inch longer. Otherwise, you know, these knives, you know, they're they're not too dissimilar. You know, if you if, a quick glance and you probably can't tell, there are some very subtle differences. So, for example, the MKB7 is half an inch longer. Um, it's a bigger knife, and I think that's fairly obvious. The, uh, the blade length is closer to seven inches. It's got a, a long swedge, but as you can see, it's got sort of a, a clip point Persian swedge, whereas the Tier 1 has more of a drop point Persian swedge. The other thing that you'll notice is that the, uh, the Tier 1 has a slight recurve. It is, it is very, very slight. The other thing that's different about them is the, the cant or the slope of the knife from the handle. You can see that the uh, MKB7 sort of goes straight out, um, whereas the, uh, the Tier 1 Mini kind of, kind of even slants a little down. The other thing that's different is the jimping on the, uh, on the production model is actually more refined than the, um, than the custom. So I would say um, the jimping on the Tier 1 is more refined than the jimping on the uh, on the MKB7. From a comfort standpoint, though, huh? It's a different. It is a different feel. The other thing that's different about these knives is their use case. The MKB7, modern K bar seven, was designed to be an all-purpose military utility knife, whereas the Tier One is actually designed to be um, more of a fighting knife. So again, Eric has that, uh, um, that military background. But that said, I'm sure when I take this out, you know, for those of us who aren't gonna be using this in a military fashion, um, I'm sure, you know, when I take it out, I work wood with it, it'll be fine. Let's do a quick comparison between the Bark River Phobos Collaboration Legion and the Tier 1C. The most noticeable difference is going to be the blade profiles. The, uh, the collaboration knife has a standard drop point swedge. The uh, Tier 1C has the, um, has the Persian swedge. Uh, the other thing that's, that's probably noticeable right off the bat is the fact that the Tier 1C has a standard choil, whereas the, uh, the Bark River collaboration has this funky choil that was designed specifically for starting a ferro rod. Um, again, I'll refer you to my uh, comparison video. This is not my favorite way to start start a fire or spark a ferro rod. The uh, the notch at the top is is much is much more effective. Other than that, the knives are very similar. The Legion's going to be an eighth of an inch shorter, so eleven and seven eighths inches. Uh, the blade length of the Legion is about a quarter inch shorter, so six and a quarter inches. Um, and one thing that's standard on this size of Phobos knife is the handle scales. So the handle scales on the, on the MKB-7 and the Legion and the, um, on the Tier 1, they're all interchangeable. So the handles are all the same size. The jimping on the Phobos knife is much better than the jimping on the Collaboration knife. Um, you can see the Collaboration knife, the jimping is a little is a little clunky. It's, I wouldn't say it's sharp, but you can definitely feel it more than, um, than the newer design. One of the issues about these Legion knives was the tip. Many people felt that the, the tip was, was too thin, um, which is pretty standard with a, with a Bark River knife. It's just the way that they, um, that they grind their knives. With the uh, Persian Swedge, you can see tip thickness is, is not, is, is not going to be an issue. Um, so if that was your concern about the, uh, about the Legion, you won't have that concern with the Tier 1. Um, now, you know, being a Bark River knife, this has Bark River's standard 
um, convex edge. The tier one C also has a convex edge, um, but it's slightly different. So it's a convex edge with a convex bevel. These legions will be reissued again. So the same company that's manufacturing the tier ones is going to be manufacturing the legions. And I'm sure, uh, I'm, I'm sure that the, the new legion is gonna be much better than this. Um, one, of the, um, one of the sore points with the legion is the, is the narrow tip. Um, that's pretty typical of, of Bark River knives. Um, you know, the first legion was a collaboration between Bark River and Phobos. Uh, the new knives are being produced by Phobos. So, um, and as you can see, you don't have that tip thinness in the tier one. Both knives are a quarter inch on the spine. The Legion is about a quarter inch lighter at 14 and 7 8 ounces. I guess the last thing to notice is the scales. The scales on the, uh, on the collaboration knife are, are, are fairly flat and, and, and featureless, to be perfectly honest. As you can see, you know, there's, there's, very, there's very little contouring, even here in the front. And on the newer knives, you can see it's got just, it's got much more contouring. Especially in the, in the finger grooves here. That was a quick introduction to the Phobos Tier 1C. I will be taking these out and, well, I'll be taking this one out and, and testing it when the rain stops. I've been meaning to get out and do some, do some camping and snowshoeing and Fortunately, the weather's been against me. So, um, thanks again. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, everybody stay safe.